Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of a series where we create a design system in Figma called FDS. In this episode, we'll be looking at variable scoping. Uh, it's November 3rd. Okay, the best way to demonstrate what variable scoping is, is to go into one of the older files and then just select something. So we've got this text selected here. And if we go down to fill and select content primary, we can also see all of the primitive colors and background colors and everything else, even surface colors. Then if you want to add something like spacing, I'm just going to select a container and over here in the horizontal padding, I'm going to drop this down and it's showing us space, right? But if I scroll down, I can see breakpoint, semantic type, pretty much everything. Let's go all the way down to the bottom and even the units which is what we don't want. And it's the same for something like border radius. So let's select the card, go over to radius, and I can see space there first, and then all the type. I have to scroll all the way down to about here. Select border radius small to make it eight. So what we want in those drop downs is to only be able to see what we need to see for each value. So if we were gonna select a semantic type variable, we just wanna see them. Spacing, we just want to see spacing, border radius, you get the idea. So thankfully, Figma has a feature that can do that called scoping. Let's go and figure out how that's done. And back in the design tokens library, I'm just going to open up local variables. Okay, and we've got borders first for radius and width. If I go over to here and go edit variable, there is a scope tab. Let's tap on that. And you can see that it's visible in every single one of these values, right? So gap, font size, line height, we don't want that. So what we really want is to see that it's only available for corner radius. So we can go back up to here, go to edit, turn off everything and just turn on corner radius. Okay, that's done. The same thing for width. What we want to see is that it's only available for stroke. So we'll go back up to edit variable, go to scope, turn off everything and turn on stroke. Okay, that's borders done. What's next? Let's go to layout. Now, layout's an interesting one because you can attach it to a frame, right? So if we turn them off, are you gonna be able to see them anywhere? I don't know. So let's just leave this and move on to the next one. Okay, primitive color. I'm gonna descope it from everything and hide it, right? Because you should only be applying color with the semantic color variables, not the primitives directly. So let's go back out, go here. So let's go into edit scope and then turn off everything it's going to make sure that i've done that to everything now so i can select that first one scroll all the way to the bottom select everything go to edit variables and there you go they've all been turned off let's move on to primitive type and like the rest of the collections i've done the first one of each set but let's go into family turn off everything except for font family Go to weight, turn off everything except for font, weight, or style. Size will be turn off everything except for font size. Line height, just for line height here. And letter spacing. Okay, next up is semantic color. And for content, that can be text or an icon. Let's go and drop this down, go to scope, turn off frame and effects because we use strokes and icons and we also use shapes and icons. And then text is right there. For backgrounds, let's turn off everything except for frame and shape. For borders, let's turn off everything except for frame, shape and stroke. For surface, turn off everything except for frame and shape, and for overlay, do the same. All right, what's next? Semantic type, and I've done these first two, so if we look at our breakpoint, you only want that for width and height, and family, you only want that for font family. Now, I've done all of the rest of the styles except for this top one, so let's do heading 5XL as an example. For the weight, Let's turn off everything except for font, weight, or style. For size, turn off everything except for font size. 
for line height. That's right, everything except for line height. And for letter spacing, turn off everything except for letter spacing. Okay, what's next? Spacing itself. Okay, so 2XS, you'll see that it's been turned on for everything. And we only want that turned on for width and height and gap, which is pretty obvious because you're not setting spacing variables for anything like stroke or font size or line height. So let's get out of here. And the last one is unit. Okay, we don't want unit available for anything. We only want it to be used in the other variables. So let's drop this down, go to scope and turn off everything. And that's it for scoping all the variables, but let's go back to that card and see what difference that made. Where if I select that text now and then go to fill, I can only see content semantic variables. And if I select the container and go to padding, I can see space, but I can also see those breakpoint ones. So let's go back there and revisit them. So let's open local variables again and then see what we can do. I'm going to select the first one, hold down shift, go to the bottom one, select that, right click and go to edit variables. Then I'm going to turn them all off and just turn on width and height. Okay, let's go back. Select that content area. Okay, now we just have the spacing, so we could crank that up to like 32 if we wanted. There you go. But let's jump out of there and have a look at the whole card. Go to border radius. And you can see that we've only got border radius here. So we can set that to eight, just like we did the first time. Let's do something else. Let's select this, go down to its stroke and drop that down and select one. And that's it for variable scoping. In the next episode, we'll be doing our very first component, the loading spinner. But until then, I hope you're looking after yourselves and each other and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.